All right, folks. So in this video, what we're going to do is take a look at this Retivas RA89, and we're going to program it with Chirp, specifically the newest iteration of Chirp, Chirp Next. And uh, we're going to see if we can read from the radio and write frequencies and all that kind of stuff to it. Uh, what I wanted to mention is that I was contacted by Retivas, and they asked if I would do a review of this radio. And of course, I said yes, because I like Retivas radios, and I like to do reviews. So they sent this to me free of charge in exchange for this video review. Now, if you're the kind of person who doesn't like or gets triggered easily by sponsored YouTube videos, you might want to go watch some cat videos. Check out PCBWay.com, the one-stop shop for all your project needs. Whether it's PCB prototyping, CNC machining, 3D printing, or even assembly services, PCBWay.com has you covered. PCBWay.com is not a broker, and they provide PCB fabrication and assembly services under one roof. And quality is always put first at PCBWay.com. Trusted by the world's major manufacturers, PCBWay.com offers way more than just PCB services. Go ahead and check them out. Get your quote today. Okay, so here's the radio, and we're going to need to interface this with our computer. And so I've already taken the cover off, and you can see the cover here. And the cover is held on by a screw, which helps with the waterproofness of this radio. So you got to take the screw out, take the cover off, and then you expose the connector types here. And so in this case, we're going to use a Retivas programming cable, and I recommend that's, at the, that's the one you use. You just plug this into an open USB port on your computer, and then you hook the K-type connector, that's after Kenwood, I believe, connector to your radio. And you just put it in like so. Now when you do this, you want to make sure that you push it all the way to ensure that your uh, cable is firmly seated in here and you have a good quality connection. We'll include this link below, but you're going to need the software from Chirp in order to do this programming. So come to this URL linked below, and when you get here, it's going to say download the latest Chirp, the next build here. So what we want to do is we want to click on that, and it's going to take you to this website, and you can download it for whatever operating system you're using. In our case, we're using Windows 10, so I'm going to click on this Chirp Next Installer, and it's going to go ahead and it's going to download it, and then I'm going to run that installed on my machine. What I'm going to say is I'm not going to show how to install the software because it's pretty simple. You just click on the executable and then go through the wizard. If you can't do that, you probably shouldn't be programming radios. Okay, so here we are in the Chirp interface, and it's pretty basic looking at first. Now, what I want to mention is, is that I have the radio turned on and plugged in, connected to the computer via the USB cable and the K-type connector. I want to come over here, and I want to hit radio, and I want to hit download from radio. And I get this dialog box. Now, the first thing is you need to set your port. When you hit this drop down, you're going to see all of the COM ports that are configured for your computer at the present moment. And right now I've got COM1 and COM11. Your COM port numbers will probably be different. Now, if you're using the Retivas cable, you're going to see something that says Prolific PL2303GS USB Serial COM port. If you're using a different cable, it's going to say something different. Some cables will work, some won't. Good luck. I would suggest using the Retivas and you should have something like this. The next thing you do is hit the drop down menu. And you pick the vendor, in this case, Retivas or Retivas, depending upon where you're from. And then you want to pick the model number. In our case, it is the RA89. I'm going to hit OK. I'm going to get this prompt that says radio information, Retivas RA89. Do not prompt again. I'm just going to hit OK. It says this is an early stage beta driver. I'm going to hit OK. <laughs> and now it's cloning from the radio. And you see we were able to successfully read from the radio. Now I can make edits to any of these. I can add a name, for example. I can add tones if I want to. Then I can set my actual tone frequency if I want to. I can set squelch, DTCS, RX, DCS, polarity, cross mode, duplex, offsets. I can set my mode if I want to. Right now we're set for wide FM. And then I can skip this for scanning purposes if I want. So that means if I'm scanning, I can include or not include that. And then I can set my power level from three different levels, and I can actually put comments in here as well. Okay, let's take a look at the settings tab, and I just click here to see my settings. The first thing I see is the basic settings, and you can read all those here. We have a prox uh, priority transmit, vox level, squelch level. These are all sp radio specific, not channel specific settings. I have my dual weight standby set for 25 seconds. Background light color set to number seven. 
Uh, keypad beep is turned on. Transmission timeout timer. This is for uh, when you're yapping along. It's set for 90 seconds. It'll time you out. There's a Vox switch, a Roger beep, battery save mode, scan type, auto key lock, voice prompts, intro screens, key lock mode. And then we have display mode and radio monitor. Okay, if I click here in the advanced settings, I get a couple more lines. And the first one is end tone elim for the end tone elimination. Intro line one, intro line two. This is what you see when you boot up the radio. Let's go ahead and change this. The smoking ape. And see what happens there. Intro line two is the model number of the radio. Vox delay is point zero f uh, it's 0.5 seconds you have our region set and then the side keys one and two these are multi-function keys and i can hit this drop down and pick a variety of different options which is pretty handy over here i have my work mode settings where i can go into vfo or memory mode uh, here i have channel and frequency is the display let's see if we can change those you can uh, a, B, select, this says B, A or B, and then memory, uh, A channel number three and four. You can change that here. Here's your FM radio settings, and this is where you can have presets for your different radio stations. I still need to enter in my slow jam channels. All right, let's see what else we can do here. Let's go back to memories. And what I'd like to do is... Well, maybe I should save this real quick. So I can go file, save as, and then I can save it. And then I'm just going to go with the default name here, Retivas RA, and then a date stamp, save. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to delete these, delete this memory, delete this memory. And I'm going to just do that real quick. Okay, now our memories are clear. One of the things I can do is I can go over here and I think it's under radio and then I can query source. Here I have a couple of different, I have radio reference, repeater book, DMR mark, and I can't pronounce that, but that looks like it's a European repeater listing. Let's go with repeater book. And when I go in there, I get this dialog box. I have country, United States, service, amateur. I can also import GMRS frequencies, state or province. Let's go with Nebraska, pick that. And then I can fill out some latitude, longitude information, uh, distance optional. Let's go... 50 miles and this says distance in kilometer kilometers from coordinates well we're just going to go home with uh nebraska and we're going to see what happens and then filter optional county hospital etc filter results location matching the string well we're not going to do that let me hit okay and see what happens okay here are my frequencies that get pulled back from the from the search <clears throat> And you can see there's a bunch of stuff in here I'm not sure that I want. Like, for example, here's a DV for digital voice. Or here is a DMR uh, frequency. And I don't want to use DMR because I can't on this particular radio. Let's say I'm interested in this one. I should be able to right-click, copy, and then go over to my radio here. And I should be able to paste. And then I can do that and get all the different repeaters that I want. Let's go back and just get a couple more. And I can paste that. Now, last thing I'm going to do is I go over my radio, and then I am going to pick Upload to Radio. And it should keep my settings from when we downloaded from radio. I'm going to hit OK, and I get those same prompts that I got earlier. And right now it's cloning to radio, so it should be writing some of the changes that we made to our radio. Let's go ahead and check out the radio and see what it says. Okay, here's the radio. Let's go ahead and turn this on. And you can see it said the smoke and ape. And then here are my frequencies that I just added. So it's pretty easy, pretty simple to do. Anyhow, I thought I'd put this video together. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, or recommendations, go ahead and post them below and I'll do my best to respond. Thanks for watching, everybody.